Thank you, Pat, very much. Our play this morning is a new work by Adam Kroll, who happens to be with us this morning. We're glad to have him here to, to join us in this event. The play is Hearts and Minds. I first saw Adam's work at the Ensemble Studio Theater, and we did a reading of his play, Wild Terrain, here in 2011. Traditionally, our Sunday platform readings deal with subjects that have relevance to the issues of our time. We presented plays about homelessness and Darfur, among others. In 2009, we read Carol Churchill's Seven Jewish Children, an insightful look at the Arab-Israeli crisis as seen through the eyes of children living through it on a daily basis. Today's play is not about the Arab-Israeli conflict per se, but that conflict lurks in the background and provides causality for the situation in which our characters find themselves. As with the racial divide in this country, we hope that younger generations will outgrow the animosity. This play, I think, provides some insight to how hard it will be, or maybe some hope in resolving the problem. Here, then, is Hearts and Minds. The, the real the, the real question is 
Did you persuade him? Avi said my speech was the most persuasive. Others too agreed, though afraid to say so. Uh, what? Please. Uh, Rudy, uh, it was a, it was a verbal bomb. My speech was a. Well, well, no, no. Did no, my no, speech no. go off in a crowded cafe, oh, no. killing eight people? Um, uh, Did it injure twenty-four, causing damage of a million dollars? No, well, maybe bomb was the wrong... Sure you don't want to root your barrel? <laughs> oh, well then I guess it's fine. I'll end up voluminous after all. Palestinians and all Arabs will never allow Israel to exist. Uh, and, well, what audience were you trying to reach? Anybody. Well, hey, well as I've explained. The class. I was talking to the class, of course. You were screaming. Emotion. Uh, well, yes, good, potentially, but uh, yeah, even the edgiest. Dopest hip hop artists work within a realm. I'm not of proposing it. that my speech was perfect, but this grade. <laughs> uh, Harry, what would you, what would you like to do with your life? I plan to be chief executive of International Telecommunications Corporation. <laughs> <laughs> I like to manage many men to make competitive business. And um, and women? I want a wife, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you ask? What I meant was um, you only want to manage men. Uh, women too, of course. Well, um, well, what about the people who might come from, say, the Middle East, like Mona? What grade did Mona get on her speech? Oh, no, no, that is not what we're talking Half about. Half the time, I can't even hear what she's saying. Is that a way to make a speech? Professor, you are Jewish, yes? Well, that's really not... In America, all. maybe you can forget. But you cannot forget if you don't... Look, I, Rudy, I, I think that you have a lot going for you. Your passion, your appetite for justice, your charm is, well, you know, well, you know, have the potential to really... Thank you. Thank you, Professor. May I shake your hand? <laughs> but I, you are a better man than that guy who gave that speech. I know. I should have practiced more. No, you're not listening to me. Please. No, you, you, you get so caught up in, in your... But if you become blind, blind? Well, if Me? You, you were really insensitive to some of the people in this class. Like Mona. Like, not just Mona. Does this have something to do with the fact that your department chairman was observing our class? No. She's your boss. Does her opinion not matter? No, today it doesn't, okay? During my speech, I thought she had eaten some bad fish. Maybe some bad clams, no? <laughs> did you get into trouble because... No, you, you keep interrupting If me. I did no. anything... No, Rudy! For God's sakes! state of my soul? 
Yes? Do you, do you believe that you have a soul? Professor, it is one of those questions for which I have not much time. And you? Are you believing in soul? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> you know, you know the word enthusiasm? It comes from the Greek. It means the God within. The God within. Mm. I like that. I think you have God within. Exactly. Oh, 
Just get out of here. Professor. No, I, you know, I am not professor. And I don't have to talk to you. Dr. Peters fired you. Oh. Because of my speech? Oh, no, no, that was just... The, the straw on camel's back. Oh, Peters felt that I mishandled the whole thing, and I did. Letting you slip by all semester, letting you present that speech, and then the, the, the uproar afterwards. I'm sorry. You have potential to be a very good teacher. <laughs> you think so? You will improve. <laughs> Rudy, I hope, hope you try to keep the God inside alive. What will you do now? I have no idea. I will apologize to Mona. Sincerely, I will. Professor, there must be something, something I can do for extra credit. If you write me a solid outline supporting each of your points we might be able to raise you half a grade. Half a, half a grade? <coughs> then what, 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 what have we been talking about? Your speech, which I think needed to be discussed. Please understand. I don't, I don't earn enough money from my job, so my father is assisting. My GPA goes below a B, he will cut me well, off. Well, I'm sure if you sit down with your father... He never wanted me to have education. He will be happy if I have to leave America and work in his office as clerk. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just can't. Why change. not? Well, because it wouldn't be fair to you. I don't mind. <laughs> I am not going to just change your grade. Is this your final offer? It's not a negotiation. Is there something else? Perhaps. <laughs> what? I do you a favor and. What kind of favor? Maybe you want to go on a trip. <gasps> you, you would send me on a trip? What? I could go with you. That's fine. Let's be realistic. You're leaving this school. There is nothing unethical about this. Oh, yes, there is. All this learning, all these beautiful words, it means nothing if it doesn't put bread on your table. Am I right? I hope not. Because you want to teach me something? Don't you understand? All I will be learning is to suffocate on the dust of obsolete invoices. I am sure. You're leaving. Uh, what difference does it make? I ask you, what difference? I think you are ready yet. I think our conference is over. Rudy takes out a cigarette and lights it. You can't smoke in here. Oh, what can they do? Expel me? Rebecca picks up her class and starts for the door. Rudy blocks her way. Will you please get out of my way? You are blocking my way. This isn't you, Rudy Sorkin. Oh, yes. Will you just put out that damn cigarette? My grandfather was like you. Always looking for the good in everyone. Even men in Moscow who spit on him every day. Never smoked cigarette in his life. He died of heart attack at 52. Rebecca tries to grab the cigarette away from Rudy, but he holds it out of her hand. You're making me sick, okay? You know, I, 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 I can't even deal with this. I can't deal with this. What do you want from my life? What do you, you want me to give you an A? Give me 
a B. For what? For what? Because... What, 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 what difference does it make? Yes. Oh, well, n you know, nothing. Nothing gets in there, does it? Yo, know, what happens, Rudy? Next, you'll be spinning. You know, you're, you're practically spitting on me right now. You're spraying, you're... My what? You know, just get out! Just get out of my life before I... <laughs> Rudy puts the cigarette out on the floor with his heel, then walks away from her. All that is left in my life is cigarettes, vodka, and fire. I'm finished. That is ridiculous. No, that's my future. I... I know how you feel, but... but <laughs> I felt that way tonight, knowing that this is my last class, possibly ever. I came to teaching late, and I am still catching up. The opportunities that... But you know something, Rudy? If you can find a way to help someone, really touch them, maybe where they've never been touched before, then nothing else matters. What if, instead of learning something, we just fail? <laughs> Professor, you have exquisite eyes. <laughs> you don't give up, do you? <laughs> Will you deny it? Why don't we forget all this and go get drunk together? <laughs> Good night, Rudy. So, there is no possibility. You can always take the course again. Professor. <laughs> you, you need to stop handling and take an honest- Fuck you! Okay? Fuck you. Rudy storms out of the room. Rudy! Rebecca looks around and slowly walks around the classroom, looking down at some of the desks, as if she were looking at students. She gets to the desk where Rudy was sitting and stops. She reaches out and imagines touching his head. She sighs desolately and then looks around some more. She goes quickly to the front of the room, trying not to lose it. She pretends to address the class. Okay, class. Listen up. We need to focus. I want you all to close your eyes. Just do it. Now, take a series of deep breaths. Rudy, take the breath all the way down and slowly let it out. And keep breathing. Now somewhere inside your body is, is a tight ball. I've got one right now in my stomach. I want you to send that breath to wherever that tight ball is and let the breath dissolve that hard little ball. And then breathe out the molecules that came off the ball. <laughs> we do it again. Now, Rudy, I want you, I want you to really see that ball. All right, Rudy, then see the Bialdi. <laughs> Just keep breathing. Rudy appears in the doorway and listens, not moving. Now the ball, or the Bialdi, uh, has disappeared. And the only thing that is in your breath, coming in slowly and going out slowly, and the molecules of your breath are swirling around this classroom, mixing together with the molecules of other students and teachers 
who teach and learn and pour out ideas and passions. Imagine, if you will, molecules of people who lived and died and spoke and wrote long before us. Those particles are here too. And the molecules are all mixing together, connecting in new ways, and, and actually creating something unprecedented. And with each breath, what you're breathing in is, is different than what you breathed out. And that altered air is, is filtering into your bloodstream, going into your brain, pumping into your heart. Just take a moment and listen to the new air surging through you. It's not just your breath or my breath. It's the oxygen that we all have to share in order to survive. And if we really let it in, it can change everything. then I would like to do the extra credit, even if it only raises me half a grade. What about your father? <laughs> I am not getting my education for him. I will find a way. Maybe even persuade you to buy a cell phone <laughs> <laughs> when you get a new job. May I write this outline? Yes. But you must get it to me by Thursday. Thursday? Email to me by noon. Rudy looks at her, trying to gauge if there's any possibility of negotiating with attention. Rebecca looks back at him, making it clear she's standing firm. The lights quickly fade to black and the 